Hi everyone, so this is a follow-up video to video one. In video one, what we did was we went through a CRUD tutorial guide on uh, with using Jets. And we used the Jets new command to generate a new CRUD app. And from there, we kind of explore the files, we modify some controllers, we modify the views, and then we start up a, uh, we start up a local server, and then we saw our changes being reflected locally. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take that same app, and then we're gonna deploy it to AWS Lambda and APAD Gateway. So let's go take a look at the app real quick. Here's the app, and here's the post controller from last time. Uh, and in order to get this onto AWS, we're gonna to have to uh, modify the database settings. So the database settings are in here, database.yml. And in here, the database.url, that's the variable of interest here that we wanna modify. So we could go ahead and like kind of set this if we wanted to, uh, but instead we're gonna use .env files, and I'll explain what .env files are for Jets. So to explain that, I'm gonna go click on the docs and I'm gonna click on EMV files. And in here's the EMV files, okay. So uh, there are three ones that I think we're gonna talk about, .env, .env .development, .env .development .remote. Okay, so .env, those uh, variables in there, they always get loaded. Uh, the .env .development, they get loaded when jets underscore env is set to development, which is the default. And lastly, .env .development .remote. this one's interesting and this is the one we're gonna use. This one will load environment variables when Jets EMV is uh, in development, but also only on AWS Lambda. And this is actually a very useful uh, case for, for, for exactly this, because we don't want the same database being connected locally as we want remotely. So let's go take a look at .env, uh, .env .development .remote. As you can see, if I actually configure this, so before this video, I, I spun up RDS database and um, then uh, I grabbed the credentials here. So this is the username, password. Here's the host name right here. Here's the database name. Uh, I'm gonna be deleting this database after this video. Okay, so um, that has that gives us what we need. Now, we also need to migrate uh, because we migrated locally in the other video, but we haven't migrated yet here. So let's go ahead and migrate. So Jets EMV, uh, not extra, uh, remote. Okay, Jets uh, migrate. So. The reason why I have to use this uh, extra environmental variable here is that kind of tells Jets to merge that remote file in also and then um, then uh, use those settings. Now, if I don't do that, then it's uh, gonna just run locally, right? And locally we've already migrated. So, um, so uh, that's not gonna do anything, all right? So um, let's go take a look at the RDS database really quickly, just so you, you can see it. So I click on RDS, then click on instances. And you can see here's the demo instance. This is the database that we're using here. Okay, um, another kind of cool tool that I like to use is called Postico. Uh, and I have it kind of, I'm gonna show it connected here. And there, there's a table right there that I just kind of created. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that open because I think it's gonna be useful later to kind of use that to verify that the records are being created. Okay, so now we just have to deploy. So to deploy, you just do just deploy and that's it. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna explain what it's doing while it's kind of doing its thing. Uh, let's scroll up here. So the first thing it does is you can see it's kind of like installing a yarn. So this is doing asset packaging, then it inst installs your dependencies kind of locally. And the reason it does this, because uh, what Jets does is it installs your dependencies. So then from there, you can evaluate your dependencies and sees uh, which dependencies are, uh, or actually it could then, it could take those dependencies and package them up. It does a little bit more than that because it, it, um, it uh, it will evaluate the dependencies and see which ones are compiled and replace them with their compile equivalents that work with AWS Lambda. Uh, and also, you can see it sets up a vendor copy of Ruby, and then uh, it shoves Ruby basically up into the Lambda uh, <laughs> server there. Um, and you can see that it actually adds up to quite a bit of weight, 76 megs here. And this is a, you know, uh, I think the limit on AWS Lambda is 250, uh, 250 megs on S3. So uh, we're, we're not close to limiting it, so that's good, but it's still, you know, uh, pretty bit heavy. <laughs> um, so what is kind of cool, though, is because this is one of the reasons why, actually, why I'm using Cloud9 is, look, it only took a second to upload this to, to S3 from, from Cloud9 because I'm taking advantage of the blazing fast EC2 internet pipe from uh, for courtesy of AWS. Okay, <laughs> all right, and then what it does after it kind of bundles up your code is it, uh, it evaluates your code, it generates a CloudFormation template after evaluating all the methods, in there and then uh, it uploads the templates and then it deploys the template here. So actually while I was speaking, this is kind of done now, but you can see the stack update 
kind of all the way complete and then it spits out the the url endpoint it also does some pre-warming there which is kind of nice okay so let's go ahead and take a look at the app there it is this is the same app we were running locally right now let's go to posts uh and there uh, there's still our hello world there uh that i guess we left in so let's go ahead and create some posts so post one uh so i submitted that one let's go back let's create another one post post two submit so that's looking pretty good let's go and why don't we edit this submit and then go back there so i did uh, some crud stuff so this is the exact same thing we kind of did locally but this is actually happening on aws lambda this is happening on rds and this is happening on api gateway so let's go take a look at some of those resources so we can see how this all kind of fits together let's go back to our council here uh, let's go to lambda and then i'm going to now kind of um, manage my windows <laughs> So there's the, uh, that's that window. And then there's this one. So here's the controller. Okay, there's the controller. And here is, uh, are the Lambda functions. So you see each of these public methods have been translated to uh, uh, Lambda functions. So here's the index one right here. So we click on index. And then why don't we just kind of throw a test event here. So test, right, uh, there's a test. And you can see the, the output from the Lambda console. It returns this format right here, it's a JSON. Uh, JSON payload, status code, headers, and body. Here's the body. So this is the format that uh, AWS uh, API Gateway integrates with with uh, AWS Lambda when you're using uh, something called AWS Proxy. Uh, so this is exactly what's uh, spat out. So then uh, this is what the Lambda function returns. So API Gateway could then return the, the page that we're seeing here, the index page right here. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, and you can kind of see also, now I'm gonna kind of explore this function a little bit more. You can go down here and you see it's actually running node dot, uh, eight, uh, uh, node eight because um, it's using a shim. And then you can see environmental variables here. Here's our database right here. Uh, you can see uh, the role that I can create, uh, other things that you can configure. Now, you, you, can, you it's not really encouraged to configure here because everything's going to be codify, right? So uh, you can actually configure, let's say, let's say a timeout setting. Where's the timeout setting? Right here. Right here. You can configure that uh, in, uh, let's go take a look config application to RB. So config application to RB, here's the, uh, so config application to RB, this is kind of where all the application-wide configuration settings are, uh, including the project name, and then uh, if you want to use cores, and uh, here are the function properties. So this is kind of like the application-wide function properties. So with AWS Lambda, you can set function properties. Like you can set things like timeouts, you can set things like environmental variables. Here's just some examples here. So you can set it here. But you also, with um, with uh, Jets, you can actually set it right on top of the method right here. So you can just go timeout 10. So that what this does is we'll set the timeout specifically for this index method to 10. Then I could do the same thing, timeout, um, I don't know, 15 for show. And you know while this is actually going, I'm just going to deploy and wait uh, and we'll let that deploy in the background. Okay, so that means index is going to have timeout 10, show is going to have timeout 15, and all the other methods are gonna have a t our functions are gonna have a timeout 20. Uh, okay, uh, you could do other things too. Like basically, uh, you could set. Um, there's a lot of different function properties. You, can, you know, I'll just show you the documentation. So where's the docket stocks right here? So let's make this okay. Function, function properties right here. So you can set things here as a timeout. You can set things. Oh, class y2 with class underscore timeout. You just prepend class underscore in front. And then that basically sets the entire class, but then you can override it for each function here too. So there's kind of three levels of uh, precedence here. There's the uh, uh, glo uh, global application wide, basically class wide, and then function specific properties that you set on your AWS Lambda functions. And then that eventually that gets translated into uh, that AWS Lambda function there. So then there are other kind of convenience variables here, like our methods here, timeout environment. You can set environmental variables right there if you want to. Memory size. Your IMA role, these are uh, pre pre created IMA roles. There, um, you you can actually have Jets create your IMA roles too through IMA policies. Uh, there, I'll cover that uh, later uh, or another video. Um, okay, so that's that. Let's also take a look quickly at API Gateway. So API Gateway. So uh, we didn't really cover it in the other video much, but I'm gonna open it now here. So the API Gateway resources get created uh, via the routes file. So when we um, um, when we generate this app and we use the scaffold to generate this post crud here, we also added this uh, method resources colon post, and that basically adds like uh, the seven crud actions. 
right? And that's the create, read, update, delete, and all those kind of actions. Uh, and, um, and then that then gets translated into this API gateway right here, uh, resources right here. So you can see that uh, the git method here, uh, it's because of this rocks file right here that exists. And, and then that git method then connects to, I'm turning my head here because this is kind of perpendicular. That connects to the uh, post controllers index. So we click on that and that just take us to act our Lambda function that we kind of tested earlier and we kind of hit that and look. Uh, and then by this time also, let's see, check on the deployment because I think the deployment's probably done already. Deployment's finished. So we this time out should be now 10, not 20, right? So here's the 10 second timeout now. And the new one, let's go take a look at new. So new, that should have a, a 15 second timeout, right? Uh, or, oh, it's, was it not new that I did? Huh, that's interesting. Let's go take a look real quick. Um, oh, show. Okay, so new has the default 20. And then lastly, uh, let's go back to Lambda again. Let's expand this. And it will show. So this should be 15. So there is 15. Okay. So that's kind of uh, how all this fits together right there. So um, uh, I want to show you one last thing uh, before the end of this is this whole thing is, is, is created by CloudFormation. So let's look at our CloudFormation stack. So here's the CloudFormation stack. So what Jess does is Jess actually uses a, a couple of different stacks. It creates a parent stack and then it creates nested stacks. So uh, Jets will create this parent stack and then from there it's going to create a, a stack for basically each of your application classes. Uh, here's a controller class for the a post controller. And let's look at some of the resources in here. So I like to usually actually click on this and click on the resources. So you can see that the Lambda functions and API gateway methods are kind of all created by this right here. Um, let's see. And then there's also some kind of internal um, uh, controllers that Jets create just uh, to serve like assets and all that kind of stuff. And here's the preheat job. So this is the thing that actually achieves. So Jets uses itself to uh, preheat itself kind of. Um, and then uh, it creates like a resource like API gateway deployment resource here. And then also here creates the API gateway resources here. So that's how this all kind of ties together. So this code that we see um, on the left here, the controllers, those are the Lambda functions. So let me open up Lambda one more time. Here, so these are all the Lambda functions right here. Let's uh, make this so it's actually readable. Okay, those are the Lambda functions. Now API gateway, that's the routes file right here, right? Uh, I know that's only, it looks like only one routes, but if you actually go to, let's say the docs, then you can see that, uh, Right here is the example. It's uh, it gets expanded out to these seven routes of the resources kind of macro there, okay. And that's that's pretty much it. That's like that's exactly how this all stuff connects from your application that we are running locally now. Now this application is now running API Gateway and uh, AWS Lambda. It's all running remotely like that, and it was just one command to kind of deploy that whole thing. But I want to sh kind of show you where it was on the console and connect it back to where it is in the code, so then like you know, we can make that mental ma mapping. Okay, guys, so hopefully you enjoy this video. If you like videos like this, be sure to like it and share it with your friends to encourage more content like this. Uh, if you want to watch future videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. You guys, thanks a lot. Cheers.